Welcome everybody to um, this session of Music Mindfulness. It is another Sunday service and I'm Kalani. Thanks for joining me either live or later. Today's topic is a big one, but I thought I would just put it out there for you and for me. <clears throat> and that is what is reality or reality is, is this, right? And how does that relate to music? You know, the idea of music mindfulness is that we can use the lessons uh, that we learn and the experiences that we have in music. And when I say music, I don't mean exclusively music, but perhaps in art making or anything related, uh, some sort of creative activity, and um, or even non-creative. But as a musician, I've learned a lot of things over the years. I've had a lot of experiences in music. So that's what I'm going to speak to because that's my experience. That's my lived experience. Um, music mindfulness. How can we use the, the lessons and experiences from music and leverage that, leverage the, the music mind or the, the music experience uh, to connect with and support some mindfulness goals? And mindfulness goals are just life goals, they're living goals, they're, they're, they're pretty much universal. Um, stay more in the present, worry less, r ruminate less, you know, go through the past less, um, sifting through all the, all the garbage, <laughs> all the baggage, the stuff that we don't, stuff that we wanted to throw away, but we're somehow keeping it. Uh, do less of that. And really, connect with the present and, and feel the, the sensations of what I call beingness. I'm not the only one that calls it that, but beingness, you know, the feeling of being alive. And it's really not hard to do all that, but what are some things that stop us from doing that? One of them is disconnecting from reality, right? Disconnecting. Um, so I'm talk about a little bit about what is real, you know, what, what is real for us, for, for you, for you and for me. Um, and the short answer is what is real is what we observe and perceive and experience, right? That's what's real. That's kind of the definition of reality. Everything that you think uh, takes place in your brain, all that stuff that's taking place in your brain is a potential. It's a potentiality. You know, it's a reference point. It's a memory. Uh, it relates to experience. Yeah, sure. It, but is it real? If you're using your imagination to generate those perceptions, right? Is that real? Well, it's a real thought, but that's not the point, right? Is it a real, did it happen? <laughs> did it, is it happening, right? Is the, is the other important question. Uh, is it a, is it a could you know, is it a should? Is it a might? Is it a maybe? Is it, it's all those things, but is it a real experience? And I would say, no, it's not. Let's just be clear. Let's just, let's not parse, you know, words here. Let's just, it's not, it's you're imagining stuff when you use your mind a lot. And uh, if you haven't noticed uh, in, in yourself or in others, that when you try to use your mind a lot, to live, to navigate the world, it's difficult. You run into a lot of problems because you don't know if those things are happening or not. You, you know, a lot of the things you think are not happening, that's what worrying is, right? Worrying is, has been called praying for what you don't want. So that's not real. And then all the things in your memory, on your, in your past are not really real either because you're remembering them in different ways. Your memories change over time. So it's really just not a reliable uh, source, right? Your, your imagination or what you're thinking, it's not reliable. It's not realable, <laughs> to put it another way. Um, your thoughts are real. I mean, there's, we're not debating that. You're, you're, you know, you, you do have the experience of thinking, but that's not the point. So how does that relate to music? Well, one of the things I love about music is that it's, it's objective, you know, when I, if I strum the ukulele, that's a here and now experience. It's very grounding. And that's one reason people like and recommend playing music or doing something related, you know, like dance or 
or singing, art making, whatever it is, but doing something that grounds you in the present. It's it. Music does not happen unless you're Mozart, maybe. Music doesn't happen in the past. It doesn't happen in the future. It happens in the now, as Eckhart Tolle would be fond of saying. It happens in the now, which is, of course, the only thing there is. Right? It's the only time there is. There's only one time, and the time is now. So music uh, grounds us in the in the present moment. It's a tactile experience. It's a somatic in other words, it's felt, it's a physical experience, it's a, an immediate uh, engagement with your mind and your, you know, in some ways, your emotions, uh, some might say your spirit. I mean, look at the ways people use music, and it's pretty much evidence that it, that it has all those effects. Now, can it be used for trance and transportation in some way? Sure. It's still grounding. It's still grounding you in the moment. You can't do music anywhere else. <laughs> and so let's take that lesson and just apply it to, to living. You know, you can't live anywhere else except in the moment. But people try so hard, don't they, to live other places. They go through their stories a lot, um, recalling and recalling and recalling and remembering and remembering and reciting and reciting and repeating and repeat, you know, the stories um, for some reason. I'm not, you know, I guess that has some purpose uh, I guess if you're trying to work through a trauma or you're trying to solve a puzzle of, of thought or a puzzle of relationship uh, or a puzzle of why did this happen, you know, you can do that if you want, if you want to try to solve it that way. But I think what you're missing out on in engaging in a lot of thinking, either either past thinking, rum, rumination, or, or future thinking, um, worry or imagination or planning, what you're missing is you're creating less room for the present when you do that, and therefore creating less room for the real, you know, your reality experience. Because you can't do both really well. It's kind of what we call an opportunity cost, right? The cost of the opportunity for taking the opportunity to ruminate or taking the opportunity to worry has a cost. It has a fee that is extracted or a tax. What is that fee or tax? That's coming out of your present moment. It's got to come from somewhere, um, and I believe it comes from your 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 present uh, connection to beingness. All right, pretty simple. Uh, is it is it simple? Yes. Is it easy? No. That's why we we talk about these things and we practice. We have a practice. So, what could a practice for you look like? Um, you know, it could be very simple. It could be something um, like many people do, having a simple body um, based practice like zazen like breathing sitting meditation walking meditation um, transcendental meditation which i studied when i was in middle school uh, which many people find useful i think that anything like that that has a grounding you know effect uh, is useful something physical and something where you're engaged and you could enter into a state of flow somewhat flow state is where it's the intersection where challenge meets skills right so challenge is on one scale low challenge high challenge skills are on the uh, other axis you know low skills high skills and and where those two meet where they cross is is what we refer to as flow state and that is where we're balanced we feel excited but we feel comfortable, we feel able, but we feel a little like we're on the edge, you know, and that's a great place to be. A lot of people have talked about that and written about that flow state. So you can look into that. I wrote a whole paper on what I call flow state music making. And flow state music making is when, I'm going to focus this camera because it's not focused yet. Flow state music making is when we play and we're engaged, um, and we're exploring. And maybe there's some unknowns, and so we're exploring. And we find things, we find things of value. We find a little gem here and there. And 
we experiment with it and we play with it. That's what we do as musicians. Musician, muse. The muse is the inspiration, it's the, it's the magic. And a musician is somebody who does that, who uses that, who uses the muse, who connects with the muse and gets amused and maybe is amusing. So these are things you can do for yourself. And I just want to point out and reiterate that a flow state is not a state, I didn't say it's, you know, you have to have a high degree of skill and a high degree of challenge. Of course, if you have a high degree of skill, you can have a higher degree of challenge because those are gonna intersect along that axis, that 45 degree, you know, line in the, in the graph, right? But you can also have low skills and just challenge yourself less and reach the same state because the flow state is available to anyone, just like reality is. Um, it's available to everyone. And I've said this in the Evolve podcast, and I wanna say it again here, because it's important to remember that every single one of you, every single person, or I would say being on, on this earth at this time, has equal access to source, uh, to living a full, spiritual life, a mindful life, regardless, regardless of geography, gender, age, economic status, any of that. In fact, a lot of people with a great deal of means and influence um, don't seem to be able to connect with maybe their spiritual selves or the spiritual life as well. Maybe there's too many things. They have too many options. Or they're going about it in a way that's circuitous um, by, uh, you know, getting caught up in the trappings of what some people would say religion or spirituality. You know, they get the clothes and say the right, say all the words. They learn all the stuff, um, you know, wearing all the clothes, going to the this place or this place or this place, reciting, you know, these words or those words, singing these songs, doing those songs, burning this stuff, lighting these candles. Um, wearing all the, the stuff. And, and, you know, and there's nothing wrong with doing any of those things, but those are not, that's not spirituality. That's performative, right? Those are, those are decorations. That's extra. So to, and it's sad that some people think they have to go to a certain place um, to, to be more spiritual, um, I don't know that that's the case. And, and that's a little bit elitist if you think about it. I would rather say, you know, we're everywhere on the planet is equally spiritual. <laughs> it's, all, it's all here. Everything that you need is here. It's inside you. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Music is everywhere. Spiritual, spirituality is everywhere. The lessons of life are everywhere. The ability to connect with the feeling of beingness is already inside you. If you're watching this, if you're listening to my voice right now, you're, you're alive on this planet right now, you might be coming later, <laughs> this, depending on how long this video lasts. Um, but you, you, if you're alive right now, all you have to do is pay attention to the feeling of aliveness that's inside of you. That's, that's amazing, that's a miracle. And then if you want to just add to that, cultivate, that, connect with that, you can do something like what I just did, like play some music, experiment. Um, tap, into, tap into the feeling um, of childlike wonderment uh, through, through music or through any, anything that, that you like. I, mean, I, I do this a lot with music. I also do it with other things. Um, I love being outside. It could be gardening. It could be you know, out in nature doing a sport or just out in nature observing. It could be at home. It could be anywhere, anywhere. Don't believe um, the, the story or the, the presupposition that you have to go to 
a special place, you know, oh, this is a very sacred place. I'm not saying there aren't places that are really wonderful to visit. I've been all around the world and been to some very, quote unquote, sacred places, beautiful places in nature. I love it. It's wonderful to be able to do that. Is it a requirement? No. Does it put me higher on the spiritual ladder because I've been to, you know, Mount Ebi in China or the Grand Canyon or whatever it is? No, it doesn't. No. You can do everything from inside your apartment in terms of connecting with your beingness and connecting with source and feeling that wonderful feeling of aliveness that's inside you. What the, the key is, is to stop doing all this other stuff that you think you need to be doing. All the performative stuff, you know, chasing somebody else's uh, design plan for you, all right? You can do whatever you want, um, wear any clothes you want, burn any candles or incense, you know, get all the stuff. I mean, that's fine. It's not a problem. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. Um, but that, again, is extra stuff. Uh, so, I'm going to play some music now, and, and if, you, if you have left, if any of you have left any questions, I'll, I'll be happy to address them. After a short music break, I'm going to play, and um, I don't know what I'm going to play. I'm going to play something, and we'll go for something a little more meditative in this segment. Um, I'm also going to talk about all the instruments I'm using at the end, so if you want to know what those are, stick around, and I'll go over all the instruments. All right, so let's play a little bit. Let's play a little bit of something right now, and we'll see what we get.
I'm really um, glad that many of you have chosen to join me today uh, for this music mindfulness session. There was a question about um, playing a lot of different instruments, and the short answer is, um, how am I able to play so many instruments? The short answer is, I'm old, and I've had a lot of time to practice and, and get them and purchase them. Um, but the little bit longer answer is I just have a lot of interests and I'm fascinated by different instruments. And so I'm, through my travels, I've met lots of different people who have shown me different things and exposed me to different instruments and sounds. And I know a lot of the instrument makers and I have relationships with a lot of people. And um, for that, I'm very grateful. And I'm so grateful to have a lot of these instruments. So let me talk about some of them. Um, I started today with, let me switch cameras first of all. I started today with uh, the conga drum. This is a, a conga and I, I played a rhythm along with the, the laptop cajon. This one has a snare on it. So I, I created a little bit of a drum set feel. Uh, of course, I played the ukulele. I played the Native American style flute. This is a wood sounds flute. I played the Zenko drum, this drum, which I've done videos on, uh, which is a, a tank drum style. and. You can see that they're a very beautiful instrument, and that's a, available at uh, WePlayWellTogether.com. And then I also played another Native American style flute by Blue Star up near Vancouver in Canada. Blue Star flutes. This is an A bass flute. Beautiful sound. And I have a Kashishi shaker. I've been using lately a lot and I like that and then I'm using a looper and that's about it so what is real what is reality this what's happening in your world right now um, I hope this has been helpful what I would suggest you try is to stop doing everything <laughs> when you have a chance stop doing stuff and just feel the sensation of being. Just sit or stand wherever you're comfortable and be, just experience the feeling of being alive for, for a few minutes. If you haven't done that, <laughs> um, I recommend it. And um, you don't have to do anything to feel the wonderment and excitement of, the, of being alive. You know, you, you, you already got that gift, but have you paid attention to it lately or ever? Or have you been chasing, 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 you know, planning, striving, achieving? Um, and that's okay to do that, but if you're doing it and you're not also spending some time in appreciation and gratitude for your life, for this life opportunity, and this real experience every every moment of every day, um, then you might want to spend a little time doing that. And you don't have to, like I said, you don't have to do anything to be more spiritual. You just have to actually stop doing a lot of the other stuff that's taking up your attention and your time, right? It's very simple. It's very simple. So I would recommend doing less, actually. Um, if you're not feeling fulfilled, if you're not feeling excited about life, maybe just pay attention to your life a little bit more and uh, less attention to all the other stuff, you know, especially especially your thinking. Your, your mind is for solving problems, but don't let it create them for you. That's what I have for you today. Thanks for tuning in. Next week, I'm off. I'm out of town. So there will not be a Music Mindfulness uh, Sunday service next Sunday, which I think is October 3rd, 2021. But I'll see you after that. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Kalani. 
If you'd like to see more or listen to more, you can visit KalaniDoss.com. Get the Evolve podcast series at iTunes and Kalani Das. And if you're into the music part, stick around on World Drum Club, look around, and you can join me also at patreon.com slash Kalani for more. All right. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of your day.